Okay, good evening, everybody. Glad that you can be with us tonight on our evening service here at New Testament Baptist Church in Halifax. Amen. What a beautiful day we've had today. Amen. Wow. Anyway, we're going to sing a couple of uh, congregationals like we normally do. The first one is going to be All That Thrills My Soul. All That Thrills My Soul. And you should see it on your screen in the building and, of course, at home. Amen. We're going to sing four verses of this. Four verses. And let's all stand for those who are in the building tonight. All That Thrills My Soul. That's all. Amen. The, Bible, the songwriter wrote, all that thrills my soul is Jesus tonight. Amen. Amen. More about Jesus. We're going to sing all four verses of that. More about Jesus. Amen. Can't wait to see our Savior. Amen. Praise God. Oh! 
last verse where he talks about more of his coming, amen, more of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming, prince of peace, amen, you know what, I can't wait for that day. You know, the world wants peace, but they don't want to do what the Bible says when Jesus came to this earth and the angels declared glory to God in the highest. And then he said, on earth, peace, goodwill toward man. In order to have the peace on earth, you've got to bring glory to God in the highest first. Amen. That's the first part. But the world doesn't want to do that. They want peace without the Prince of Peace. That's the big problem that we face in our society tonight. Anyway, we're going to take our Bibles tonight to go to Daniel chapter 7, if you would. Thank you for each and every one helping out in uh, the services. Amen. It's always a blessing to have help. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's uh, technology, technology, let me tell you. <laughs> Amen. It is a regular challenge uh, with the technology. So I got a couple of handouts here. I was going to pass that on to if, uh, Darius, if you'd come up here, buddy, and if you could pass this on and this on. Let's see here. I just want to make sure we got that. We got these two here. And this, if you don't mind, buddy, and you give that to Sister Kelly over there, amen. Thank you so much. I got all this paperwork here, amen. Lots of paperwork. Praise the Lord, you know. There's uh, so much in the Word of God, and uh, it's important for us as believers to, um, I don't know, I guess uh, we need to know and we need to understand, amen. Understand the truth. God has this book for us. So when you read through it, you look at it and you say sometimes, you know, I don't know what am I going to use that for, you know. Well, you don't know. And, and I think the other issue is that we fail to realize that God wants us to read all of it even though we don't understand all of it. We don't. Like we'll be talking some things about the millennial kingdom tonight. I don't understand everything about it. I don't understand everything about it. I understand more of it than I did, you know, 40, 46 years ago, you know. I mean, but I don't understand it all, and we all got to learn something, so I, I've, I've, I've learned some things, you know, but still growing, still learning, amen? So what we're going to do is look at verses 9 through 14 in your Bibles tonight, 9 through 14. We'll read this section here, and of course, this is a, a vision that God gave Daniel about the second coming of Jesus Christ. When I say the second coming, I must understand, as I've said so many times, and it, 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 uh, it's important for those who don't know. Uh, to understand there's two parts of the second coming. One is the rapture, the other is the revelation. The rapture precedes the tribulation, and the revelation comes at the end of the tribulation. So you got two parts, and some people don't see that and so forth. But anyway, we're not going to go through all of that detail tonight, but this is the Lord Jesus Christ coming back to this earth. We're not talking about meeting him in the air. We're talking about him coming back, and we're coming back with him. Amen. Verse 9, I beheld the thrones were cast down, ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair was like the pure wool. That's verse 9. And his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. Verse 10, fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands, how about that? That's the saved, amen. Ministered unto him, 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, the judgment was set, and the books were open. Amen. That's the great white throne judgment over there in Revelation. Verse 11, and I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, verse 13, behold, one like the Son of Man, Come with the clouds of heaven, came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's the kingdom age, that's the millennial kingdom. And the kingdom and all people, nations, languages should serve him. Amen? How about that? Can't wait for that day. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Let's pray. Father, bless your word tonight. Uh, God, meet with each and every need, Lord God. And again, we just look to you and trust you tonight. Father, be with those who are unable to meet with us. Lord God, we do rejoice and thank you that through, Lord God, technology, we're able to connect with people who are unable to come to the building. And for those, Lord God, who are maybe are even away at times. So, Lord God, we thank you for this. Now, God, bless our time. 
speak to hearts, meet with needs. And we pray especially for those here in the building and, Lord God, who will watch this or are watching, that if they don't know you, Lord God, help them to settle that matter tonight. Help them to realize today's the day of salvation, not tomorrow, Lord God. So help them think about that, meditate, and more importantly, act upon what you've spoken to their hearts about. Now bless our time together and our fellowship around your word, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Um, as we mentioned last week, we're not going to go through the whole uh, study that we did last week. You need to go to the last Sunday night's message if you want to know more about the comparison, the harmony between Daniel 2, Daniel 7. Daniel 2 is the image. Daniel 7 is the vision that God gave Daniel. And there's a, there's a correlation between the two. Okay? Speaking of the, these empires, the Babylonian, the Medes, and the Persians, the Greeks, and ancient Rome. You'll see that. And then, of course, the, um, the, the empire, the kingdom of the Antichrist. Okay? And he's that little horn that's, that was spoken about that we read in verses 1 through 8 there that we talked about. And we'll talk some more about him, how the Lord's going to deal with him. And uh, so anyway, so let's look at this in verse 9. And beheld the thrones were cast down, the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days. Hey, praise the Lord, that's, the, that's our eternal God. Amen? And he says there he had what? Whose garment is white as snow. Uh, white garment. What's that representative of? It's a representative of purity and righteousness. Amen? And uh, white hair. What's that a picture of? <laughs> Thank you. Wisdom. Amen. Wisdom. That's what it is. Amen. That's the hoary head that the Old Testament talks about. Amen. You look at these seniors and stuff. You know, we, we really got to make sure that we understand tonight, you know, as these seniors are passing on the scene, uh, you know, you got grandparents or great grandparents. You need to spend time with them and learn from them because we're, we're losing some things because we're not connected. We are more connected to our peers than outside our peer group. Unfortunately, and that's not a healthy thing. When you read the Bible, you'll find that there's two or three generations that, that, that can span, possibly four. It depends on how young people are when they get married and how many kids and so forth and when they have them. But at least three generations, possibly four generations. And we're finding out that even the younger generation today, they're connected to the ones that they go to school with, more so than their own parents at home. And we've, we're losing some connections here. Our kids, when they were growing up, they didn't have a lot of kids in their peer group. So what did they do? They ended up uh, uh, talking and inter, you know, interacting with people outside their peer group. What, what other option do you have? But that has helped them. Amen. That has helped them. Amen? So not wrong to have time with your peer group, but also don't stick to that one peer group. Let's move beyond that and say, okay, how about the seniors over here? Amen? So it's picture of righteousness. That white hair, amen? And of course, we, we, I'll read something in Revelation in a minute. Then there's a fiery flame and, and fiery stream there, and that's a picture of judgment. That's a picture of judgment. In Revelation 1, keep your place in Daniel 7. Revelation 1, you'll see this here. Revelation chapter 1. I mean, there's so many similarities, of course, between God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Isn't that right? So when we read over here in Revelation chapter 1, look at verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, good about with paps with a golden girdle. Watch this. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white, as, white like wool. Sound familiar? As white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. Hmm. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice the sound of many waters. How about that? And he had, in verse 16, in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Because in the second coming, the world will be in darkness. The sun will be darkened. The moon won't give its light. Because people wonder, what about Revelation over there? I think it's 1 7. It says that every eye shall see him. How can that be possible? Well, if you're in total darkness, you'll see that bright light. In Malachi chapter 4, he's called the sun, not S O N, but S U N, capital S U N of righteousness. If you're in darkness, the sun's going to blind you. 
Every eye will see him at the end of the tribulation, and we're coming back with him. Anyway, so, <clears throat> and then the Bible says here, let's read on here, um, verse 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. <laughs> Amen. That's a good one to listen to today. Uh, I am the first and the last. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. How about that? Man, I'll tell you, you can do a whole Bible study on that one. So anyway, that's, listen, here he is. The Ancient of Days is described over there in Revelation chapter 1 is Jesus Christ. Boy, the same thing. Well, because, the, hey, they're both God. Amen. God the Father, God the Son. And uh, so thank the Lord for that. So anyway, go back to uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. The Bible says, and uh, look down to verse 10. A fiery stream issued, came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And the judgment was set and the books were open. You know what? There's a numerable number of people. There's angels. There's a whole bunch assembled there. And humanity is standing there, those who are, who are set for the great white throne judgment. We won't go through all of that, but the lost, amen, those will be standing before him. And then he says, judgment was set, and the books were open. God's got many books in the Bible. That, that's a whole Bible study in itself. There's the book of the living over there in Psalm 69, 28. There's also the book of remembrance in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. There's the book of life, and then there's the Lamb's book of life. So when you get saved, your name is put in the Lamb's book of life. Your name's in that book, and God doesn't have an eraser. He doesn't have an eraser. When you are saved, you are in Christ. You cannot get out of Christ. You're in Jesus Christ forever. You know, sometimes people say, well, how can that quote-unquote Christian do what they're doing? I don't know, but I'll tell you this. You know, I can't sit here because you and I, I've, I've been through this, many have gone through this. You look at people and say, I don't know if that person's really saved. And I come to a point where I say, the Lord knows them that are his. You know, um, when I meet people and if they claim to be a Christian and there's some things I might have questions about. I'll ask them, of course, their, their testimony of salvation. I'll ask, say, could you explain what, you know, what happened that day that you came to know Christ? I kind of compare what they're saying to the Scriptures, because the Scripture is the standard. It's not my ideas or my own opinions. It's the Bible. And if it doesn't match the Bible, they're not saved. That's just what the Bible says. And uh, so anyway... But there'll be people standing before Christ. You know, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Philippians 2 talks about. That's, that's what's going to happen. The people who are bowing the knee today, they, listen, they need to bow the knee today to Jesus Christ. We talk about bowing the knee across the United States and Canada through all these different movements that are going on. How about the knee? You're bowing your knee to Jesus Christ. You better bow to him now because... Right now, you can meet him as a lamb. In the tribulation, you'll meet him as a lion. You'd, re you'd better meet him as a lamb before Christ returns to take his bride home to be with him. Verse 11, I beheld them uh, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. And I beheld till the beast was slain, his body was destroyed, and given to the burning flame. Look at, uh, keep your place, we're going to go back and forth to Revelation here and there and all that kind of stuff. Re keep your place in Daniel 7, Revelation 13. There's some key passages, we've already read some of this, but we'll just kind of refresh your memory here. Speaking of the beast, the Antichrist here, <clears throat> the beast in verse 1 of chapter 13, I stood about upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads a name of blasphemy. And the beast I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and the mouth as the mouth of the lion. We've already talked about that in verses 1 through 8. Amen? We kind of went through that. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. 
And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and the world wondered after the beast. Verse 4, they worshiped the dragon, which gave the power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there were given unto him a mouth, speaking great things. See, that there, again, it talks about the great words in verse 11 back in Daniel 7. That's the great words of the beast, of the Antichrist. And then the Bible says here, um, let's see here, uh, let's see, verse 5, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, we read that also, blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. That's the last half of the tribulation there. That's at three and a half years. But the whole tribulation time is called Daniel's 70th week, which is a week of years. And that's a whole study, which we've done a long time ago. And uh, so anyway, so half of that. So he's going to come. First, there'll be a, a peace treaty made. There'll be someone rise up that everybody will embrace. They'll like him. Amen. They'll say, oh, he's, we want him. We want him. He is a deceiver. The devil. The devil's a deceiver. Amen. People are easily deceived. And the reason why they're deceived is because they don't know the truth. You know, people are so enamored by social media and the news media today. We are ripe for deception because people don't spend time in the Bible. They don't. They don't. They're ripe for deception. You need to know the truth. The truth will set you free. It'll make you free. John chapter 8. The truth will make you free. You want to have freedom? Don't allow the media and the, uh, the news media and the social media to control this. If you do that, man, I'll tell you, uh, we, you know, we talked about it this morning a little bit. Fear hath torment. Perfect love casts out fear. So the Bible says, if your love is perfect, that means it's mature. You're growing in the Lord. Amen? People are tormenting themselves with this stuff. They really are. I, I, you know, you got to take a break from that stuff. It's, it just wears on you. Amen? It'll just wear you down. And you won't be any good. You won't be any good. Your mind will just be, you'll be so full of anxiety and stress. Amen. You got, man, I'll tell you, it's, it's crazy out there. It's crazy out there. We're so, we got instant information. Amen. We got it just at our fingertips, our cell phone. Bang, there it is. This happened over there in Portland last night. This is going on, this is going on, this, I mean, it's going, man. We got information overload. It's, it's, we need to spend time in this book. We need to get closer to God, not ignoring what's going on. But what can I do about this stuff? The best defense is to get the gospel out and tell people about Christ. If we're going to see God do something, here's the time for not Christians to hole up themselves, amen, but to get out, and when God gives you opportunity, pray, God, give me opportunity to talk to somebody about you, Lord. Here's the opportunity. The devil wants to deceive you to get you in total fear, even though you're saved, and put you in torment so that you don't talk to others about Christ. The devil accomplishes, he keeps people out of heaven by stopping us from speaking the truth, getting the gospel out. And I'll tell you, we're, we're, we're in trouble. Christianity's in trouble in the world, especially in North America. I will say that for sure because that's where we live. In North America. And uh, verse 6, and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, to overcome them. Power was given unto him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Amen. Anyway, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 7. Okay, look at verse 12. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had domin their dominion taken away. Their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. The previous kingdoms, the Babylonians, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, and so forth, uh, they were swallowed up, okay? And uh, so look at verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Amen. Again, referring to the return of Jesus Christ. And came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him uh, near before him. 
Amen? They're dominion. So these people, so there's a transition taking place from human dominion, or actually more, more, more clear would be um, dominion from Satan, because the Bible says, and we'll see in a few minutes, a reminder that Satan is the god of this world, little g. He's the god of this world. What, what do you think this is all, things are going on like the way they are? Why do you think that? And as I've already mentioned, uh, Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. That was Revelation 1-7. We mentioned every eye will see him. Matthew 24, 29 talks about the fact that the sun is going to be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Total darkness. So when Jesus comes back as the son of righteousness, Malachi 4-2, every eye will see him. <laughs> you can't miss that. You can't miss that, amen? Can't miss that at all. Verse 14, watch this. And was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all people, nations and languages. You know, I am so excited. God has given us as in New Testament Baptist Church and other folks, Christians, who have met other Christians from different lands, amen? We're going to be together someday. All believers in Jesus Christ will be together, amen? And we're talking about nations and languages, amen? And there won't be a language barrier. How about that? We have some language barriers here, amen? Sometimes it's hard to understand different people from different countries, but not there. This will not, amen, it will not be a problem, amen? And he says here, and shall serve, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which, which shall not be destroyed. So it's kingdom, amen? Now, let, let, let me just go through a couple of things here for you to help you understand a transition of history, okay? This is a transition of history of a start, at least 6,000 years and counting, okay? And it's a handful of verses. Look at, keep your place in Daniel 7, Look at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 26. Genesis 1 and verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. By the way, that's the implication there of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He says our, plural, plural. There's not three gods. You know, like the cults, the cults say, especially the JWs, they say, oh, you believe in three gods. No, I believe in one God, three persons. They say, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, that his words and thoughts are not our words and thoughts. This is God's word. This is not my word. This is not man's word. This is the word of God, the words of God. You're not going to understand everything in here, this concepts. It's just the facts are, this is what God says. This is what the Bible says. You know, and yes, we have, yes, we have many answers to give to people, but if they say, I don't want to believe what you believe in because I just don't want to accept the Trinity, that's their business. But if they reject Jesus Christ, the punishment is hell. We know that. That's what the Bible teaches. So you're going to, you know, because you don't understand something. Do you understand everything about science? Do you understand everything about medical science? Do you understand everything about your mind and how it works? And no, you don't. You don't stop living for that. You don't reject everything. No, you say, okay, I don't understand it now. Maybe I'll understand it someday, and we go on. We don't allow these things to stop us in our lives. We move on and say, okay, I can't figure that one out. Doesn't mean you don't understand anything else, but that's the way some people operate. They're just using that as an excuse, of course, not to receive Christ. Verse 26, so God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. What's dominion? Rule, thank you. It's rule. Who did he give rulership to? Adam. He's a ruler. Amen. That's what the Bible is teaching here. He had rule. God says, here you go, Adam. You got the king. You got the throne, Adam. Let's see how you do with the throne. Amen? Well, so we know what happened. We know in Genesis chapter 3, a couple of chapters later, what happened. Adam and Eve fell in the garden. They fell in the garden. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, that Satan became the god of this world. 
They lost dominion to Satan. You say, how can that be, Pastor? Go to Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. You remember Jesus in the wilderness, in the temptation? He was tempted for 40 days. He had to be tested. The Bible calls Jesus in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, he's the last Adam. He's not, he is not the second Adam. He's the last Adam. Where Adam in the garden failed, Christ passed every test. When you look at Genesis 3, you'll see the lust of the flesh, the, uh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those were the three main areas of temptation attacks. And they failed in those areas, all three. When you get to the Jesus Christ in his earthly minute, beginning of his earthly ministry at 30 years of age. All we got is three and a half years of his life in the Gospels. That's it. Except for a little blurb here about his birth and at 12 years of age. Otherwise, it's most, most of the information is three and a half years. That's all it is. And what happens? In the beginning, he's tested privately. By the way, that's the real you. How do you pass in the private arena of life? Not when you're around other Christians, because that has a restraining influence on what you do or say or not say or do. It's what you are in private, all by yourself. That's the real us. And Jesus was tested by Satan. Three same areas. I've done the collation between Genesis 3, Matthew 4, Luke 4. Of course, this is a comparative passage in the Gospels. Jesus passed every test. He did. He passed every test. So when you get down to uh, Matthew chapter 4 and look at verse 8, he says, And again the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. I said, here you go. And saith unto him, All these the devil is saying, I will give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. There's no way the devil can give something he didn't have possession of. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's the God of this world. He had possession of them. They lost possession, dominion, in Genesis chapter 3. You say, why, why is this world a mess? And why is, it's been under his dominion. That's what's happened. And the Bible says here in verse, um, so he says, all these, verse 9, will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He says, I'm not going to bow down and worship you. You know what? The devil wants, not only self, he wants to be worshipped, but he wants you to worship anybody or anything. As we talked about covetousness, which is idolatry this morning in the Sunday school hour, he wants you to do anything but worship him. Don't worship him. The devil doesn't want you to do that. Anything. Do anything. Amen? Go any way you want except for God's way. That's what the devil wants. So, man forfeited that dominion. Satan became the god of this world. He took a measure of a control over the king kingdoms. We read that, yes, the Bible says that, you know, he, that God can set up and remove kings in Daniel chapter 2. But at the same time, the devil himself... He's the God of this world, of the systems of this world. And it's obvious by you look at the news feed lately. People are, it's anarchy out there. Things are out of control. Man's out of control. Man's got a rebellious spirit. You find out from the time your child is born from a mother's womb that the Bible says it's in the heart of a child for rebellion. Now, if God said that, that means every child. You say, well, my kid's perfect or my kid's... I don't know what standard you're working from. God says we all have that heart of rebellion in us. We're rebels, if you're honest about it. And uh, we live in a world full of sin and rebellion. The Bible says that that rebellion is as witchcraft in 1 Samuel 15, verses 22 and 23, I think it is. Amen? Man, I'll tell you. That rebellion, disobedience. Says, God says, God put on the same plane of witchcraft, and I dare to say tonight that any, not one of you would engage in witchcraft. I would hope not. But God says it's on the same plane. Rebellion, disobedience is on that same plane. That's how God looks at it. We don't look at rebellion that way. We should. 
We need to readjust our thinking and our standard. So anyway, the Bible says that, again, God, you know, Satan's that, that governing power of the present world system. John 14, 30 says he's the prince of this world. He's the prince of this world. That's what Jesus said in John 14. But aren't you glad it won't be like that forever? Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Go to Revelation chapter 11. And that's what we're talking about in Daniel 7. Are you ready? Dan, or Revelation chapter 11. And look at verse 15. The Bible says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, Are you ready? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. You know why Jesus didn't take them back there in Matthew 4 and Luke 4? Because he knew his time was coming, and he knew the devil's time is short. He took them there. He says, now the kingdoms. I got control. Amen? He's got control. That's that thousand-year reign, kingdom age. Praise the Lord, amen? And he shall reign forever and ever. Forever and ever. Boy, thank God for that, amen? So it's not until the close of the time that we're covering here in the prophecies that you'll see of Daniel that this will take place. Because Daniel, as we'll see in a couple of chapters, Daniel 9 talks about Daniel's 70th week, which is the seven-year tribulation. And he's, he's going to take it. It's mine now. Taking it back. No longer, devil. <laughs> You're going to be chained up for, a, for most of the thousand years. That's what he does to the devil, amen. He's going to chain him up. You say, why would he let him loose? God's hoping some people will just come to know him. But people are easily deceived. It's the reality of it. Just like we have today, people are deceived. They don't, because they don't know truth, amen? Anyway, let's go back. Uh, so, let's see here. We will, yeah, we'll go to, back to Daniel 7. Keeping an eye on the time here, Daniel 7. <clears throat> Ezekiel, Daniel. Boy, I tell you, I, think, I, I can't wait for that day. I'm getting tired of all this stuff. I don't know about you, but it's, it's, it's man, I'll tell you, it's, <laughs> I got something to look forward to. You do, too, if you're saved. Amen? It's brighter. You say, oh, this is terrible. Amen? That means that much sooner. Right. Oh, this is terrible. Look what's happening, you know. Getting rid of, you know, we, we're more closer now to a castle society than we ever. Praise God. Amen? That means the Lord's coming back. Amen? <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, we better get busy for God and tell people about Jesus. That's their biggest problem. He said, don't fear the one that can kill the body, but fear the one that can kill both body and soul in hell. That's what Jesus said. We got a lot of people, a lot of Christians are afraid of the one that will kill the body. Why are you worried about that? You're saved. You're going to heaven. I know. You're thinking about the suffering and the pain of death. Well, if the Lord it doesn't come back before the undertaker, we're going to have to face some of that. Amen? But I got something to look forward to. Man, I, we got hope in Christ. Man, I'll tell you, if, if you don't get your heart on the right thing, you'll be so discouraged and depressed and everything. You know, man, oh. man, we'll talk a little bit about some of the characteristics of the Millennial Kingdom in a minute. But anyway, Daniel chapter 7, look at verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit and in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. <laughs> I guess so, if God gave you these visions. Amen. That'd be pretty tricky there. And I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. You know, this heavenly creature of sorts, we assume, maybe. And then I think about this one that says he asked them the truth of all this. You know, the Bible teaches us in James chapter 1, verse 5, that if you lack wisdom, ask God. He'll give it to you all liberally. He'll give you wisdom. You want it? Many of us are praying for, and I'm not saying it's wrong either. It's not wrong to pray for money and health. But is all our prayers about that? You know, we have some needs, real, real needs. And one of them is wisdom. Amen. And by the way, prayer is not all about asking. That's a good part of it. 
But we need to thank God for what we do have. Are we thankful for what we do possess? Things could be a lot worse than we got right now, amen? I don't know how we're going to fare through the winter time. I don't know how this thing's going to go. I really don't. But you know what? God knows. God knows. You're saved. Can you trust God? Leave it in God's hands. I can't control this stuff. I can't control the governments of the world that are under the God of this world's control. I can't control that stuff. And by the way, whether down south, their presidency, the election coming up, or here in Canada, whether they call an election or whatever happens with our president administration, if you put your hope in these people, you'll be disappointed. My hope's in Jesus. He's, he's going to be the perfect prince. He's going to be the perfect king. He's going to do everything I've always wanted to do. He's going to fix this mess up, really. He's going to fix it all up. I do vote, by the way, and I do pick as much as possible people that represent me as far as my biblical values as much as possible. You'll never find somebody that will represent all of the biblical values that are listed here. There's no such a person here. That person's coming. His name's Jesus. <laughs> In the meantime, we've got to settle for less. Somebody says, well, I guess I won't vote. And you're giving a vote to, to the other side. Whatever that side is in your voting scheme. Anyway, ask God. So, he, so that's what Daniel did. So ask him the truth. Help me out here. I don't understand what's going on here. Amen. The angel of the Lord, a heavenly creature. So here's the summary of the vision. Verses 17 and 8. The great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The kingdom. Praise the Lord. You know, some people don't believe in this millennial kingdom. They got different positions on it. I'm not going to go through all the different positions in here. But I can't wait. I just know this. The Bible says it's a thousand years. In Revelation 20 from verse 2 down to verse 7 says a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, just in case you didn't get it the first time. He says it at least six times. It's a thousand years, it's a thousand years, it's a thousand years, but yet people still deny there will be a thousand year millennial kingdom. There will be. I can't wait for that. What is it going to be like? What is it going to be like? If you want a copy of this, I could send it to you. Don't be afraid to ask for stuff. I got all kinds of paper. I can send it to you via internet. Geographically, the territory. You know what God promised? The descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they're going to have all that land. You know modern day Iraq, Iran, Syria, all those countries? No more. <laughs> That's all a kingdom. If you can just imagine, if you have a map in the back of your Bible, Euphrates River there, then you've got the Great Sea, Mediterranean, and then you can draw, superimpose a great triangle over that. It's about, you know, my, I, I know it in miles roughly. It's about 700 miles this way, 700 miles, and 1,000 this way. Saudi Arabia, all those countries. That's the Jews. That's their land. They don't have, they have a tiny little part of that. Tiny little part of all of that. They're going to have it all. There's going to be some changes in topography in the land when Jesus comes back. A lot of changes. Jerusalem will be the center of the world's worship. How about that? Yeah. One place, one main place to worship. Amen? Um, the Bible says that Jews will return, live in the land. They'll all be there. Every one of them. Amen? And not only that, but socially, the Bible tells us that there will be a universal language. There'll be a peaceful society. There'll be real justice and judgment performed. Universal worship, a rebuilt temple. Man, you just go on and on. Of course, the devil and his uh, unclean spirits will all be chained up for a thousand years, or most of it. Environmentally, see people are on the environmental page. I, I, you know, I, I'm not for polluting and all that kind of stuff, but some people made a god out of it. You know, save the animals, save the trees and all that. I'm not trying to destroy any creatures. The I, I, Bible says regard the life of your beast. 
I've had cats and dogs for years. Took care of them. Never mistreated them. But I don't worship them. People in our world elevated animal kingdom above you, or at least on the same plane. They're not on the same plane. They don't have a soul. They have a spirit and a body, the animal kingdom. You have a, you're made of three parts, spirit, soul, body. People worshiping the creature rather than the creator. That's what Romans 1 talks about. So anyway, he's going to fix it all up. Any of the problems, by the way, Genesis 8 tells us that uh, the seasons would never cease anyway. That's what he said. You say, oh, you know, you know, they're talking about global warming or, you know, climate change. They keep on changing. And as I've told you so many times, when I was going through high school or finishing up uh, junior high and going into high school in the late 60s and early 70s, they said this. It was called ecology class, and they said this. The world's going to be in a great freeze. That's what they said back then. That was accepted science back in the late 60s, early 70s. That's what was taught in public education. So people say, well, I really trust what's being taught today. Really? This is the only book I'm really going to trust. I'm sorry. This book has not changed. You can trust this book. If God says they'll never cease, they'll never cease. And by the way, God also promised in through that rainbow that he would never flood the earth. And that's been stolen by a group of people in our society that have perverted it. That's the world we're living in. You think, who, who's behind all this stuff? Satan. Satan. There's a book out there. I think it's uh, a guy named Turek. I forgot his first name. Or no, no, it's another, maybe it's him. I'm trying to think right now. There's a couple of guys that I got some uh, uh, books from in Kindle. And one of them that he wrote is this, Stealing from God. People steal from God. Did you know that? They steal from the Bible. That's what they do. They take something that God ordained to be pure and clean and they make it dirty. That's what they do. That's the wicked world we're living in. But anyway... So there's so much. You know, when you look at other aspects of the kingdom, the millennial kingdom, it's a thousand years. Heaven's eternal when you compare heaven and a millennial. Um, I mean, man, I'll tell you, praise the Lord. I just can't wait, amen. Our bodies, thank God. I mean, man, you get a new body in that rapture, praise the Lord. There's no turning back, amen. Anyway, I just can't wait for that day. Let's move on here. Verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, and whose teeth were of iron nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, stamped the residue of his feet, and the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, before whom the three fell, even of that horn had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints. That's the Antichrist during the tribulation. Because, you know, some people don't understand this. The Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So that can't be right now because the Bible says that we are overcomers in Christ. And greater is he that is in you and I, if you're saved, than he that is in the world. But he will overcome the saints in the tribulation. There'll be saints. There'll be people coming to know the Lord. But it'll be pretty tough. And then he says... Um, verse 22, and the, until the Ancient of Days came, the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Again, that's at the end of the seven year, the second coming of Christ. Verse 23, then he said, this fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall, diverse, shall be diverse from all kingdoms, shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down, break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Another shall rise after them and shall be diverse from the first, and she shall subdue the three uh, kings. In verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. Again, that's the Antichrist. And shall wear the saints of the Most High. I think the devil's trying to wear people down now, God's people. I really do. I really do. Amen. He's trying to work. And to think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and divided in time. That's the last three and a half years of the tribulation. We already talked about that last week. That's verse 25. 
Verse 26, but, judgment, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, which part of this is, again, the interpretation, which we've already just covered, shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. And last verse of the chapter, and again, here's, here's Daniel's reaction to this interpretation. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, and I kept the matter in my heart. That's not a word that you and I use in our modern vocabulary, is it? What's that about? That's deep thinking. Do you, you, you ever go into deep thought? Get into deep thought about something? That's what Daniel's going like. Man, he's in pretty deep thought here, thinking about he's contemplating something. It, it kind of troubled him, the Bible says. It troubled me. My countenance changed in me, but he says, I kept the matter in my heart. He said, I'm considering, trying to think through this thing. You know, what if God sh shared, showed all this to you? Amen. <laughs> I think that would trouble you. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, that, that would trouble me. Like, wow. <sighs> Can you imagine? So you got 537, 538 B.C. when these visions were given. Way, I mean, come on. You got another 538 years, then another couple of thousand years, and still counting. So how come he hasn't come back? I don't know. It's not his time. He's coming. He's coming back. He hasn't forgotten us. We haven't been left behind. <laughs> Amen? Let me just read one last verse and we're done. For the people today, God's people today, you got to think about something really Something so important here. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 2, I'll read this. Now we beseech you, brethren, verse 1, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him. So when Paul went to the, the believers at Thessalonica, he established this church, they thought they missed the rapture. They thought, oh no, we missed this thing. Man, what, what's going to happen here? He says, that you be, verse 2, not soon shaken in mind or trouble." we got a lot of God's people that are shaken in mind. A lot of shaking going on. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So we won't be here when he's revealed. So you can be aware where you haven't missed anything, so don't be so soon troubled. He left, and Paul left the, these believers, and bang, next thing you know, he finds out, what's going on down there in Thessalonica? Man, they're all having a real time down there. People are worried, and they're thinking, I missed the rapture. I missed the Lord's return. No, you didn't. We haven't missed it either. His word's still true. You can trust in it, amen? Amen. Well, listen, we need to stop there. We'll pick it up, Lord willing, next Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Yeah, next Sunday on Daniel chapter 8. And uh, so let's all stand. We'll close in prayer. And uh, if you want any of the handouts or anything, let me know. Amen. I got a couple here, but if you want one, I can send it to you if you want no paper. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for our time together in the Word. Help us, Lord God, to understand your plan, your program. God, you've given us advanced revelation. God, from at least 25, 2600 years ago practically. And help us not to worry and fret. Help us to trust in your word. Everything's right on schedule with you, Lord. We don't have to worry about anything. God, this day that we're living in, you knew all about it. This is no shock or surprise to you. Help us to trust you. You've given us the word of God. You've given us all the tools we need to live in this time. Even as your word says, a crooked and perverse generation we're living in right now. So help us, Lord God, to stand for truth and right, not be ashamed, not be full of fear and phobias. Lord God, help us. Help us tonight. We need your help. We need your strength. Now guide and direct us, Lord. Use us to reach the laws. Help us not to, Lord God, to keep from sharing the gospel with others. Help us to be bold, Lord God. And God, help us to encourage one another. 
So, Lord, we do look to you, and we trust you, and we await your return. Help us to be found faithful. We ask that you give all those present in the building as we all go our separate ways to give us safety as we go home. Bless our evening. Help us to meditate and think upon your word. Help us to study it. Search the scriptures, even as the Bereans did, Lord God. So help us tonight, and God will look to you and trust you, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you again, Lord willing, this week. Amen.